Hey hackers and welcome to Super Hack 2024. We're so excited to be partnering with ETH Global today and to be a part of the Superchain ecosystem. It's incredible watching it grow and expand. This is just such a cool time to be in Web3. My name is Andrew. I'm the customer success manager at GoldSky and I just wanted to give you a quick overview of who we are in case you're unfamiliar with GoldSky. At a very high level, our goal is to essentially streamline how projects use on-chain data. When it comes to understanding what's happening on-chain, making sense of it all and effectively maintaining that data in the back end to use it for your project, it's a lot of work. It can be really challenging and it's a quite difficult process to have to you know, always think about and just always be working and allocating resources towards. When maintaining Web3 data tooling, you know, there's many variables you have to consider and the obstacles can quickly stack up. So just to name a few, pre-made endpoints that can you know, limit customizability of what you can build. SQL APIs can often be complex and not as efficient. Database sharing could be really slow. Bespoke indexing could cost a lot to maintain. I mean, to be honest, it's just, it can be quite a pain, especially when you don't have a whole team dedicated to maintaining that infrastructure 24 seven. So that's where we come in. We do it for you so that you can focus on building. There's many solutions out there today already, but sometimes you can say that the batteries aren't included. And at Gold Sky, we aim to provide a comprehensive solution that includes everything you need to get started and also keep running smoothly. So some of the key principles that we really value are speed, efficiency, uptime, customizability. We offer robust tooling to allow you to build the exact use case you want and have dedicated support to walk you through that process so that we can ensure you get there. So the two core products that we offer are subgraphs and mirror. And today we're going to be diving into how both of these work so that you can start building with Gold Sky. But at the most basic level, subgraphs allow you to pull on-chain data and query what you need, whereas mirror allows you to push on-chain data directly into your database to store where you want it. So why don't we dive in and learn more about how these work? Hey, hi there. My name is Javier. I'm a solutions engineer here at GoldSky. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the multiple ways by which you can deploy subgraphs using the platform. And so what you see here on the screen is essentially a um, essentially the GoldSky dashboard. Uh, and I just created a, a test account for the purpose of this video. So when you create a, an account uh, and you navigate to subgraphs, uh, you will be presented with this quick start model, which is basically a very easy and intuitive way for you to uh, deploy what we call the community subgraphs. And community subgraphs, where they are, are uh, essentially curated um, subgraphs by the Gold Sky team that you can use for free. And so here we have uh, a bunch of them, but by the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and um, deploy Ethereum blocks, for example. So when I go ahead and click deploy, I'm going to have these community subgraphs uh, immediately being deployed onto my project. So this is what we see here. Now we are into the uh, subgraph detail page and where we can see a bunch of very useful information, like, for example, the healthiness of the subgraphs in terms of where we is, some, some very good metrics on it, also logs. And we also got a few things like uh, you can create webhooks. Uh, so, for example, on when certain entities of your subgraphs, they get saved, for instance, uh, you can communicate this information into your uh, external HTTP endpoint, uh, and then you can do other things uh, of, uh, you know, on, on your infrastructure. Um, so this will be the first way to go about it. Uh, as you see here, we also have a GraphQL endpoint that you can use. Um, so this will be public by default, and essentially you can just query it. Um, there's also the possibility for you to create a private GraphQL link. So in this case, um, for you to be able to query this endpoint, uh, you will need an authorization header. So this is sometimes this is uh, better in case you want to restrict the number of uh, API requests onto your subgraph. Um, so this will be the first approach, right? Uh, the second approach that we can go about this is essentially creating or deploying the subgraphs uh, from the from the source code, and so. Uh, which is the second method I wanted to go over. Uh, in this case, we have this POAP subgraph here. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and, and deploy these subgraphs uh, onto my project. So um, I already have this, let's actually go ahead and maybe delete this. So maybe we can go, um, right. So and then clear this bit, there we go. And so now uh, let's just clone this. Okay, I just clone it, 
uh, sit into it for a while. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go install dependencies. While this install, we can take a look into it. Um, essentially, it's a very, very simple stuff for us from POAP. Um, we need to install dependencies uh, and it uses a, a template. So I'm going to run the template so we can get a proper software demo file. Uh, and then we can just deploy it using the CLI command from GoldSky onto my project. Um, all right, so this is now done. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, jump it for mainnet to get that sub graph YAML file. Okay, and now I uh, create a code gym and build the sub graph. Okay, go. All right, so now um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to deploy this uh, SAF graph into my project. And so to do that, um, I'm going to go ahead and use the cold sky um, CLI command. Um, one of the things you will need to do first uh, is run the cold sky login command. So this will allow you to input an API key, which you can create here onto your project. We'll go to settings and you can create a new key over here. Um, this will allow you to basically connect CLI into your project. I already did that. So I'm already connected to my dashboard. No need to do any of this. So what I'm going to do next is run the, the gold sky software command. So I'm just going to do a gold sky software app, um, and then do deploy, put on a name for it. So I would just say something like, um, pull up software app, a version for it, and then define that this is going to run or create, be created from a source. So I'll deploy this from source using the gold sky CLI command. And I'm, I'm given here a, essentially another another endpoint right that we can use to query so actually that's not gonna run here so if we do let's actually run another one maybe something like this yeah there we go all right so this will be one um now uh if we go into my project you can see that this is now deployed here um and now we also have you know the ability to get into the software uh, detail page um one of the things that is uh, actually very useful uh, when it comes to you know these GraphQL endpoints is that in, in many occasions you may want to update your SAF graph logic. Um, it could be because of the mappings have changed or maybe you just want to uh, create or de de redeploy it from a new start block. Uh, in those cases, what's gonna happen is by default, the GraphQL uh, uh, endpoint will change, uh, but you may have a ton of uh, client facing applications talking to that endpoint. So it's gonna be very costly for you to update all the clients, right? So instead what we can do is we can put on a tag onto the SAF graph so we have a fixed uh, endpoint and then we can easily switch tags as we go and update the SAF graphs. So I'm gonna very easily uh, or very quickly go through it. Um, so if we go into, let's actually look into this. If we go ahead and look into the code, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna create a new version of this SAF graph. So for example, um, you know, a new start block for instance like this and hit uh, pretty much the code gen command again and code let's actually do uh, code and jar build yeah all right so now we're ready to uh, deploy a newer version of this stuff graph so before i do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to tag my existing stuff graph with this prod uh, tag or whatever we're going to call it right so i'm going to go ahead and say uh, gold sky stuff graph uh, tag create, and this is going to be POAB SAFGRAPH, uh, we called it, POAB SAFGRAPH 100, and it's going to call it PROD. What I'm doing now here is basically, I'm going to have this static PROD endpoint, which is basically the exact same one as this one here. So you see the deployment ID is this one, while this is this one, right? Okay, so now we have this fixed endpoint. The next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna deploy a newer version of the SAF graph with, uh, you know, with that little change that we did before. So for that, I'm just gonna go ahead and deploy version two of the existing SAF graph. Um, let's go ahead. All right, so now we have another SAF graph here with another URL. Uh, we go back here into my project, we can see this newer version. Um, which is going to be version two. Now, what we can do is we can move the tag so that we don't have to query this new endpoint. Uh, instead, we just connect that fixed static endpoint onto the newer version of the SAF graph. So uh, to do that, we just basically run the exact same command. 
that we did before. So now is it two? And now we're adding that tag into it. So if I go ahead and uh, this is the prod endpoint, refresh it, and then we run it. Now we see that the deployment ID has changed. So this is one of the advantages of using uh, tags, which are actually very powerful. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, we deployed SAP graphs using community, um, SAP graphs from GoldSky, from source. Um, one last thing which I wanted to go over is uh, what we call um, uh, instant SAP graphs, which is basically, as the name implies, a very, is a very easy way to, for you to deploy SAP graphs without actually having to code them. Um, and so without really getting into the nitty gritty of it, I'm just gonna show you a quick example of how that works. Um, so over here, I've created this uh, no code friend text SAP graph. Uh, if we look into it, let's actually take a look. Um, you can see that these instant SAP graphs, um, they basically rely on upon two main things, which is basically one config file. Uh, this config file defines the name of the SAP graph, as well as uh, where the ADI of that SAP graph is located. And you also need to input some information, such as the chain, uh, the address of where the SAP graphs, uh, so the contract is located, and the SAR block. This will be the simplest way of it. You can also complement it and use what we call enrichments. Uh, and then we can basically add event handlers, Etc. So basically, create a no-code SAP graphs without you having to actually get into creating the full-blown um, project or or a scaffold of that SAP graph ID. Um, so we have this, and we have we're pointing to the ABI JSON, and the ABI is here. Um, with this, we already have enough to be able to deploy this SAP graph uh, using Gold Sky. So how we do go ahead, and it's going to be with this command. Let me just switch it here. Um, this is going to be Gold Sky SAP graph, and uh, then deploy. Since uh, this is a friend tag, I believe, yeah, this is a friend tag in, in, in base, yeah. It's friend tag in base, I'm just gonna call it something like friend, friend tag, um, 101. Uh, and then we pass in the, the option from ABI, which is basically from ABI is gonna be my friend tag config JSON file, right? So this way, it's actually in. The subgraph is being generated by GoldSky based on that config file, and now it's available right here. So now we have our deployed subgraph is here. Let's just see what we have available to query in terms of uh, data. Oh, let's just do it here. So for instance, what we can do, we can now, for example, see, and we can trade, and we can see the trades for this, for instance. And we can query this information. All right, so this will be instant SAP graphs. There's a lot to talk about it. There's a lot of great enrichments that you can use. Um, so that's actually pretty good. And so the last point which I wanted to go over is you can also very easily migrate uh, existing SAP graphs um, onto GoldSky. And for that, you will go ahead and create the deploy command again and just define a from URL. This will be for the hosted service by default from the graph hosted service, which is an outside set it. So it's better if you use from IPF hash, which is the graph decentralized network, but you can also go ahead and it doesn't have to be from the graph. If you're running your own graph node endpoint, uh, we can also migrate over it from it. So you will just need to define a, another option, which would be something like, um, um, something like from URL. So this would be something like from, um, <clears throat> let's actually go ahead from API. See if I can find an example, yeah. So here, for example, we are defining that we want to migrate uh, this SAP graph from this IPF hash and the IPFS gateway is located over here. So this will be another example where you can very easily migrate SAP graphs off your existing graph node endpoint onto, onto Gold Sky. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how to create mirror, pi mirror pipelines um, for linear decoded blocks. And so before I go ahead and show you how to do this within the, the dashboard and the CLI, I wanted to just give you a um, high level overview of the different components that make up the uh, mirror pipeline. And so uh, just basically a mirror pipeline allows you to stream uh, Web3 data into your data warehouse. Um, now uh, the actual data that you can sync into your data uh, warehouse, uh, it's either going to be sub graphs that you have deployed on that uh, specific network or maybe uh, data sets that we have available for you to consume directly and add into your, into your database. And so the three main components that make up a mirror pipeline are going to be the sources, uh, transforms, and sinks. And so 
sources, as I said before, this could be SAP graphs or this could be our own data sets that we have curated and are already, already available. Uh, in the example here, what we're going to do is we're going to choose linear decoded logs. And next, you will want to define uh, transforms. Uh, so transforms allow you to basically, as the name implies, right, uh, <laughs> process and transforms uh, the data that is on the pipeline uh, in real time. And so it's quite useful in cases where, for example, you may want to filter the data um, from a specific address. Uh, as an example, it would be if, you know, if Uniswap is something you're interested in and you want to uh, track uh, swaps from Uniswap, then you will as well uh, add the the Uniswap contract address in here, so that the actual um, resulting data sets gets filtered on that uh, contract address. So the transforms are quite powerful, and I will talk about that later in a second. Uh, and then the third part of it is the uh, syncs, and so uh, syncs and basically allow you to uh, all let's say syncs is the destination where the data gets written, and so. This could be uh, this could be an S3 bucket. It could be a Postgres instance, like I will do in these examples. Uh, it, it could also be a ClickHouse instance. Um, so we support a number of things, and this is something I'll, you'll be able to see on the documentation. Um, one important thing here is that for us to be able to write data into your uh, data warehouse, into your sync, we will need to have uh, the credentials uh, and the information needed to, to be able to do so. And so that information uh, about us being able to write to your sync is stored under secrets. So it's very important that before you even go ahead and create a pipeline, that you create a secret uh, for us to be able to create, uh, you know, to add that data into your, uh, into your sync. And also important is that, uh, for example, if, let's say the we're writing it into your Postgres DB, uh, and then you create a, a secret for us to kind of write into your database in the name of an uh, existing user. You you should be able to you know um, create that user beforehand, those credentials beforehand, and make sure that that uh, that those credentials can be used in the to write it into your database so they have the correct permissions. All right, so this is pretty much it. Sources and you can define one or many. Transforms are really optional. You might as well use transforms or not, uh, things you can use one or many. And and so one question I saw in the chat before was um, about being able to query this data. Um, the thing is, once the data is in your database, uh, it's really up to you how you actually interact with that data. And so typically what we see the most here when with uh, real world implementations is that um, you know, customers will have an API front in the DB so that uh, the dApps or whatever type of uh, client application Will consume that information via via an, an API, but so this part over here is really up to up to you on how you would want to architect this. All right, and so that's actually pretty. I think that's uh, pretty clear there. Um, now, how do we go ahead and create pipelines? Um, there are three ways that you can go ahead and create pipelines. Uh, you can do it through the web pipeline builder, uh, which I'm going to show you first, and then you can also do it through the through the CLI. So the web pilot builder, uh, I would say, is the easiest to start with. Um, it's quite nice, and uh, so you will see in a second. Uh, it's a little bit more restrictive in terms of what you can deploy because it uses defaults for most of the options. Um, and if you want to have a more granular control over the actual pipelines, so say for example you want to define transforms of your pipelines, or you want to have do multiple things or multiple database or multiple sources then you're better off doing this via the CLI with a definition file. OK, so let's go ahead and let's start with the easy. Uh, the easy part will be with the web pipeline builder. And so how do we go ahead and create uh, pipelines using the web pipeline builder? Uh, you will go here, go into your dashboard, go to pipelines, uh, click on the new pipeline button, um, select the data source. As I said before here, we are going to go ahead and uh, use the linear decoded log. So I'm going to choose direct indexing. Uh, oh, all right. Now here, um, I'm presented with all the uh, multiple data sets that we have available. Uh, there are quite a, quite a few, and it really depends on your use case. Uh, you can you may sometimes find it more interesting to consume raw blocks, uh, traces, logs. In our case, again, we are going to go for decoded logs, which is right here. So I'll go ahead and choose the color logs, and then I will choose the chain we are interested in. So I will choose linear. Um, you see here down there that we have some example data from this uh, data set. 
And you can also see here uh, this configuration file, which for now we will ignore, but this is the kind of the backbone for the CLI if we want to deploy uh, this in the CLI later. But for now, let's ignore this and let's continue with uh, the UI experience. So we already chose the Kotal logs for Linea. I'll go ahead and create the pipelines. Here we have some config for the pipeline. So uh, choose a name for your pipeline. And just uh, make sure that uh, it's unique and you don't have any other pipelines with that existing name. Choose a description if you want to deploy, uh, basically differentiate this pipeline for others. Um, resource size, uh, basically this is the amount of uh, compute and uh, memory that you want to allocate for this pipeline. Uh, as you can imagine, the more the merrier, but it's also in terms of processing, but it's also more expensive. So. Uh, for this example, I'll start with small, um, but if you're consuming a ton of information and you want to backfill pretty quick, uh, then you you might want to go for uh, larger options. Uh, again, sources, we said uh, the code logs for Linea. Here you can choose uh, if you want to uh, backfill from the very, very start block of the chain. Uh, this will be the earliest block. Out of you want to start consuming pipeline from the latest block uh, at the edge. Uh, again, here you can uh, have some sort of uh, little transformation. Uh, you can, if you want to add a uh, filter from a specific address, you could easily do so here uh, by adding it in here. But in this case, uh, I won't be doing any of that. So uh, we'll just leave this out. Um, I would just go ahead and click Next. Uh, as I said before, pretty important uh, when you configure a sync, which is the next step here. Um, you need to define a secret, right? And so the secret will basically security represent those credentials, of that information for us to be able to write into that database. And well, as you can see here, I have already two syncs or two secrets for two syncs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose Postgres. I'm going to choose this one. Uh, but if you wanted to create a, a secret as you go here, you can also do so. Uh, so if, let's say if you choose Postgres. You could add here the connection string, the secret name, and then you would be making use of this secret from now on to, to talk to your database. Uh, as I said before, very important, make sure that um, you know this username and password that we use here, uh, it's already pre-created on your side and has the correct permissions to be able to write into, your, into that database or that table. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose Postgres. Uh, and then here, I'm going to choose the schema where uh, the table will be created. I'm going to choose by default it will be public. I'll leave it as it is. Um, uh, this pipeline will actually create a table and the corresponding schema for uh, for that for you know, for that sync for that for this data. Uh, the actual table name is not something you can edit here when you use this um, approach via the UI, but it is something that you will be able to uh, configure uh, if you chose the the CLI option with a configuration file. Uh, and this is just to give you a small hint. So uh, let me just go next here. You see here that I'm, I'm ready to confirm and deploy, and I could just go ahead and deploy the, this pipeline as it is. The other options is that you can take uh, the existing pre or, or let's say the resulting uh, definition file that's been created by this step-by-step -step, uh, approach that we've taken with the UI and deployed with the CLI, since you already have here this uh, configuration file created for you. But we're not going to be doing this for now. So I'll just go ahead and, and deploy the pipeline. Now I deploy the pipeline. And we're pretty much finished with the process here. Um, right? So now here, you will see that the status will, will change as we, as we go. Um, now it's inactive. I think this is because I pre-recorded, oh, you know, I pre-deployed uh, this before. but we should see this uh, change into to active uh, and live pretty soon. So now what's happening under the hood is that the pipeline is being created. Uh, and what the first thing that I will do is that within my um, database, which is here in a Neon DB, which is the one that's going to use Python my secret, is going to create that table and it's going to start writing data into that table. Um, so over time, we'll see how this that table is being created. Um, so that will be the, the first step into how to create the pipeline uh, using the web UI, which is pretty simple, uh, just a little bit restrictive when it comes to certain things uh, within the definition file. Now, the second option is uh, via, as we said here, via the CLI. And there are two ways to do it via the CLI, interactively or from a definition file. So let's go ahead and let me show you interactively what it will look like. Um, hopefully, see 
like in this, yeah. So um, first, of course, make sure you have the Gold Sky CLI um, install. In this case, um, I'll just see here. In this case, I will just go ahead and click Gold Sky. I already have it installed, of course. Um, as you can see here, it gives you a nice overview of things that you have already deployed, etc. And it asks you here interactively if you want to um, create a mirror pipeline. So I can go ahead and initiate this process, which is pretty similar to the one we just did on the UI. So I will just say yes. I will just choose a name for the pipeline. Um, what logs? For example, I would choose the source types to be direct indexing. I would choose my chain again, which is linear. And I would say that I want the logs and I want to process all historical data. So as you can see here, and I would say no source, is the exact same, um, the exact same uh, type of experience that in the UI, but only the CLI, right? So I would say, do you want to filter? Do you want to add a transform for filtering data? I would say no filtering. And then the sync type, I would choose PostgreSQL. And because I already have that secret, which was created before, uh, I will also just go ahead and choose this one. Uh, I can choose the database schema here as well. And, and this is more configuration options. So this is yes, no more things, et cetera. And I will go ahead and create the pipeline. I'll just cancel because I don't really have to deploy that pipeline anyways. So that would be the second way to deploy the pipeline, which is basically interactively and so the third one would be how to decode and how to play it via the definition file, which is a lot more flexible, a lot more granular. Um, one thing that I just noticed here is that as I came back to my to my pipeline, the one that I created to create it through the web uh, through the web builder, I realized that the records have been written into my database, which is great. And I can also confirm when I access my database, I can see here that um, you know within the public schema a table was created and that it contains this data. So so that's, that's actually pretty good news. Uh, we have a function in pipeline already. Now, uh, as I said before, the the last uh, method to create pipelines, which is the most the powerful one, but it also involves you know some more knowledge of the or, of the pipeline itself. Um, it would be through a configuration file. Uh, so pipelines are defined by YAML files, and again they have their sources, transforms, and syncs. Uh, I'll make sure to send over. The reference file for you to see what needs to be added into this uh, config file but basically it's all about that right it's all about choosing your sources that can be not only one source you can choose many uh, so for example uh, you're not really restrained limited to the coded logs here you can also do uh, something like rob logs uh, within the same pipeline uh, then transforms you can as i said before you can write your own logic here to filter on on data um, or maybe do things like decoding on the fly as well and so this is uh, any SQL uh, Flink compatible um, queries that you can you, you, you can imagine. You can also write in here. So that would be uh, the transforms, and you can add many transforms as well. And then things, uh, as we saw before, this is where data gets written. Um, you can have um, you have more control here because you can not only define the schema but also the tables. So in many cases, you may be writing to different tables if you have different entities or different data sets, right? Um, so as, as you can see here, there's a lot more power in doing it this way, uh, but it's a little bit more tricky, if anything. And so one thing I could do, right, is every since every pipeline is referenced or is um, represented by a configuration file, I can make use of this existing one from uh, the one that I just deployed via the UI, um, copy it, and deploy a modified version of this pipeline. Let's see some sort of version two, right? So I'm going to go ahead and de de uh, download this uh, file. And uh, which is not going to be here. So if I do something like then um, linear decoded logs, YAML, I have that I access to this here. So say, for example, that in this new version of this new pipeline, which is a cop or is based on the other one, I don't want to have access to this. I don't want to have a transaction has. I'm not interested in that, um, not even in this. I just want the block number and the other params, right? So this is also valid. What the resulting of this is that the newer table that will be, uh, or let's say that this pipeline will have less information than the previous one, essentially. So this is just an example. So if I go ahead and click save, what I can do now is that I can deploy this newer pipeline um, this way. So we'll just go Gold Sky pipeline, create, 
uh, let's just call this, uh, let's see what's the name of this one, uh, linear decoded logs version, version two. Um, and now let's actually say definition path. Uh, and then we choose uh, linear decoded logs YAML. So with this command now here, it will validate the, the actual file. If everything goes well, it would say, hey, this is good. And now you can monitor the status of the pipeline this way. Uh, and so this will just give us a nice overview every 10 seconds of how the pipeline is going, um, just like a monitor. You can also monitor the, any pipelines, even those created with the UI builder uh, this way as well. And you also have access to where the pipeline is located in your dashboard via this link. Welcome back. Hope that was helpful and you learned a lot. You know, we work with tons of exciting projects in the space, Polymarket, Arweave, Dora, Hashflow, Poap, just to name a few. And we can't wait to see what you build out. Maybe one day your name's gonna be on that list. So the next step for you is to create an account and get started. Take a look at that guide that's attached to our prize page if you haven't already. There's a discount code in there to get you access. And for easy access, here it is too. It's ETH Global 2024. That'll give you access throughout the whole hackathon so that you can deploy subgraphs and use mirror pipelines. But yeah, connect with us on Discord. Come say hi. I'm going to be in there in that channel. So drop in and, you know, introduce yourself, ask some questions, feel free to reach out. And of course, don't forget to follow us on X to stay up to date on all things Gold Sky. But thanks for tuning in. Excited to see what you build. Good luck and have fun.